Hey everybody, this is Coach Allison and I am back with week 47, Defy Aging. This week we have two circuits running simultaneously. Perhaps if you have a smaller group you uh, in, your, in your class, in your session, you might just run one at a time. Uh, there's going to be four exercises in each, um, each circuit. There's going to be three rounds of each and they're going to be timed a little bit differently. Round one will be 30 seconds on, 25 seconds off. Round two will be 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, and round three will be 30 seconds on, 35 seconds off. So as you can see, the work time stays the same, but the rest time does get a little longer with each round. So as I said, four exercises in each circuit. So let's review our eight exercises. Exercise one is a half kneel kettlebell halo. So we got our kettlebell bottoms up and we're in this half kneel position. We want to stand up nice and, or stay up nice and tall. We're not standing. And we're going to do our kettlebell halo. So we want to keep it kind of tight and low. So we keep the bell as low as we can, meaning not high up here. And we also keep it in tight. So we're not keeping it way out far from the body. So low and tight. And it might kind of mess up your hair a little bit. Your hand, your arms are going to run into your hair, so we might get some funky hairstyles at the end of this. Okay, no worries there. Um, every time you come back to the front, you're going to switch direction with your kettlebell. So try to keep alternating direction. Halfway through the set, you're going to switch your leg position. So we're getting even amount of time with each leg up. Okay. Uh, so what did I say about the hair? Of course, mine's already always kind of weird. Another option if we're staying off the floor is to do a staggered stance. So you kind of keep a soft bend in both knees, and we have a staggered stance as opposed to kneeling fully on the floor. That still incorporates a little bit of need for that core stability because you're still a little unstable, right? And another option is standing feet parallel, kind of a normal stance, taking out that staggered stance, so as opposed to this. We're standing like this. So we have three different options there, um, but the half kneel, kettlebell, halo, with a couple other options as well. Next is our back pull. Now this one, we do it, we've do we done it before. It's uh, You have a band hooked up to a rack, and it's not a back row, which is what your body is probably going to want to do. So it's kind of hard to break that urge to want to pull and bend the elbows. Instead, you're going to lock your arms in straight. <laughs> Um, and not bend the elbows by pulling back and it's a very small movement and we're just pulling back with the back muscles. I know that sounds silly uh, but I'll do a few reps here. I'm retracting my shoulders and my shoulder blades and kind of by doing that your chest kind of pops out. You're kind of doing a chest pop is what that's what I call it and again I'm not bending my elbows. So your, your body is going to want to Pull back with the elbows, I promise you, but try really hard to resist the urge to do that. Um, maybe I'll stand. So watch my up like my this here, shoulder blades. And we're, all we're doing is this. Me showing you from a couple angles might get the picture. See how I'm doing that? But of course, you're holding onto the band, so you're pulling a little bit of resistance back too. You almost get a good contraction and squeeze without even holding any weights. But if we hold on to a um, firm resistance band, you're, you're pulling a little bit of resistance there. So again, try to really resist that urge to pull into a row. And let's try our back pull. Next is going to be a heels elevated squat. I don't I think we maybe have only done this once in Defy. I'm not even sure if we've done it once at all. So your coaches will already have something set up for you. But I want to show you that the heels elevation that we need is really only like one and a half to two inches high. So we, we're, we don't want something like a box, like something that's this high to have your heels on because we don't want your heels elevated so high that it's going to feel like it's tipping you forward. So I grabbed a 10 pound weight plate. As you can see, it's only maybe at one and a half inches high. Um, so one and a half to two, maybe two and a half to three, I don't know, inches high is all you want for the elevated heels. Um, again, your coach will already have a couple of options there. And all you do is come and put your heels on them. <laughs> and you also just want the very edge of your heel. You only want about two inches, two to three inches of your heel on this elevation. So maybe I'll turn to the side so you can see what I mean by that. So as you can see, 
just a little bit like the back two to three inches of my heel is on not like the whole back of my foot but not just like the tippy tip of my heel either so about two ish two to three inches of my heel is on this elevation so that said put the items where it's a good stance for you good hip width stance and then we go into squats okay so this just puts a little more focus on your thighs on your quads and want to make sure we're not doing anything like this so we're not this isn't a squat so you still want to sink those hips down and back pop the butt back slight lean forward with your upper body but we're not leaning down okay so still everything with the normal squat don't let the knees protrude way out front it's going to feel quite a bit different so don't worry about getting too low um, don't worry about depth until you are a little comfortable with the feel of those heels being elevated but let's give it a try all right, next is a mini band zigzag walk. So I already have the mini band in the right spot. You want it above, um, just above your knees. So like just above the actual kneecap. Okay, and I would recommend a really firm band. Um, everyone's different, of course, but you're, we're using big, strong movement here. So I have the firmest band. Um, I'm trying to be far away from you so you can, you can get a good distance here. We're doing a zigzag walk. So you go into like a quarter of a squat. So from the side, you can see I'm not in a full squat or anything, but kind of a quarter of a squat, maybe a third. I'm gonna keep that position. I'm gonna step, cut, big step, kitty corner, come kind of together, other direction, kitty corner. And you're just gonna kind of keep that zigzag pattern going. And I'm just gonna get back, so you can see it one more time. <laughs> so keep yourself in that bent knee position, quarter of a squat, okay? So we're going for that wide step, really wide, and also kind of to the corners. So I hope that, I hope you get that visual. I know I was kind of far away there, but it's really important to keep that kind of quarter of a squat body position the whole time and use a nice firm band. And let's give this one a try. Next up is a tank shove. We've done this once or twice. So instead of continually pushing the tank, you're just gonna give it one big shove at a time, okay? So put one leg in front to brace yourself here. Okay, get close, get your chest close to the tank and give it a shove. Just let it go, see how far it goes, walk up to it, get your stance again and give it a shove again. Okay, doesn't matter what foot you put in front, I want it to be whatever leg you feel more braced with, okay? Um, if we are at a point where we have people doubled up at stations, I recommend having someone on each side of the tank and you're going to kind of shove the tank back and forth so I would give it one shove and then my partner on the other side would shove it back to me so I recommend coaches um, and clients just FYI I would recommend um, if we're doubling up at stations let's go about the tank that way anyways but that is our tank shove all right B stance hip bridge is the next one don't ask me why it's called that because I really don't know um so you're on your back let's see what's the best way to see okay so one leg, so I'm, my left leg here is going to be normal, but normal position that you would do for a hip bridge. Okay, just my other leg here, I'm going to put a little bit farther out. So don't extend it too far. So this is normal. I'm just putting it a little farther out and I'm going to flex the foot and I'm going to put the foot on like, I call it the tip of the heel. So right where the shoe is, the corner of the shoe on the heel here. Okay, so one leg is in the normal position. Other leg is a little farther forward with a flexed foot and I'm on the tip of the heel. And we're gonna do our hip bridges like that. Halfway through the set, we're gonna switch the leg positions and continue. So at the 15 second mark, hope you can see like the leg positions. Maybe if I go like this, so again, one leg's normal. Other leg is a little, well now I can't see my feet. Hey, one leg's normal. One leg is a little farther out on the tip of the heel like this. I don't know if you can see from this angle, but okay. So that's new for Defy, at least. I know it's in our baseboard build. Anyone not getting on the floor, we're gonna turn into a, um, a B stance deadlift. So grab a weight. It's really that same thing. One leg 
um, is staying flat, normal. The other leg is kind of back like a kickstand, okay? Let yourself roll up to the ball of the foot. The side of the leg that's back, that's the side you're holding the weight with. And we're gonna go into a deadlift. So shift those hips back, keep your back nice and flat. The leg that you're working is actually this leg that's flat on the floor. But it's a similar concept, okay? Because you have that one leg that's kind of like a kickstand. And then halfway through, the time will switch. So, B stance hip bridge. Alternative for anyone not getting on the floor is the B stance deadlift. All right, single arm isometric chest, chest press. I didn't know what else to call this. So let's see if it makes sense. I'm already on the floor in the position for a chest press. Elbows are kind of dipped down a little bit. All right, I'm gonna press both arms up. But now I'm gonna leave one arm isometric, so leave it steady as I do reps nice and steady with the other arm. So that's where the isometric comes into play is that one arm is staying isometric. Halfway through the set, so at the, thir at the 15 second mark, you're gonna switch. So now I'm gonna leave that arm still and you start doing reps on the other side. Okay, don't worry about speed or anything, because with 15 seconds you won't get a ton of reps, but don't try to go for a lot of reps, so don't, don't try to go fast. The safest way to put these down from the floor chest press position is to bring the elbows down, and then kind of clunk the bell down like that. That's gonna be a safest, the safest way in your shoulders to put the weights down. And then, um, for anyone staying off of the floor, our coaches are gonna wheel an incline bench into the space. And I think we'll just do that exact same movement, same thing I just demoed, but on an incline bench. So it'll keep you off the floor, uh, put you on a safe um, way to lean back on an incline bench and we'll do the exact same exercise, keeping you off the floor. Last but not least is our tandem walk. Haven't done this for a while, so let's revisit this. It's our heel-toe walk, otherwise known as. Um, so, walk and heel to toe, just like that. So, so again, not going for speed. Okay, a couple things to keep in mind, though. It's okay if we need to glance down and look at our feet. However, we want to be careful how we're doing that. So. Like right now, I'm glancing down and I'm looking at my feet. But I'm doing so by dipping my chin down and using my gaze, my eyes. If we, if we need to look at our feet, what we don't want to do is do this. And like hunch over, bend over, and sacrifice our, sacrifice our posture and our, you know, our form to look at our feet. So, uh, <laughs> so keep that in mind. It's okay if you look at your feet, but do so by... Just kind of glancing down with your chin and your eyeballs, okay? Second, secondly, it's okay to do this along a wall. So maybe coaches put this somewhere along racks or walls. So anyone who would like to kind of have a safety net of maybe having the wall near them, totally fine. If you'd like to progress this, you know, there's a, there's a couple progression options. The first one is simply lifting your chin up and looking straight forward. That's the first progression. Next progression is looking around, like kind of actually looking around the space you're in, looking at people off in the distance, out the window, moving your head left to right, up, down. Ooh, see, I looked up and I kind of lost my balance there. Third and final progression, or was that the third? I don't know, final progression? I don't know if I can even do this, let's see. Is closing your eyes, oh boy. Closing your eyes. I knew the table was there. It's significantly harder, so if you feel ready for that, give it a try, slow it down. Um, so anyway, that is our tandem walk. Take it to whatever level you are at, whatever level you would like to progress to, uh, but do try to touch, actually touch, wash my feet, try to actually touch the heel to, like physically touch the heel to the toe. Um, we're trying to avoid like leaving space between. Part of the challenge with the tandem walk is that, that tight, you know, tight heel to toe walk. So tandem walk, give it a try. Team builder time. So at this club I'm at, they don't have, uh, we don't have an agility ladder at this moment. So, but I know the coaches and most of you know what that is. So the agility ladder will be laid out. One ladder for the entire session attendance. 
and we're going to time this. So everyone's going to do hopscotch. So there's going to be a lot if all the clients are lined out in one line, ladder is in front, hopscotch out and in of each uh, rung. That's and then of course you can do the in out steps so for anyone avoiding the um, impact of the jumps. It'll be the in out steps. Okay, so you do that a lot, the whole ladder, and then you're gonna run to the back of the line, run, jog, speed walk, whatever. Just get to the back of the line, however it works for you. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna time this. We're gonna time the, how long it takes the whole group to do it. We're not timing individual people, so it doesn't matter if how fast you go as compared to somebody else. That doesn't matter. Everyone is just doing their individual best. Um, so we're gonna time it, and then the coach will tell you what we're gonna what we're gonna do with that time. So that's our team builder um, agility ladder hopscotch relay. All right, that is week forty seven. Somehow it's almost Thanksgiving, almost Christmas. Anyways, I hope you enjoy this workout. We'll see you back next week.